at Toronto Police Headquarters. That is where investigators are providing an update about a carjacking investigation. Let's listen in live. Uh, before I invite Superintendent Andy Singh and Inspector Joe Mattis up to speak, I want to acknowledge the exceptional efforts of our officers in combating auto thefts and carjacking in our city. Today we're here to share the details about the remarkable arrests made last Friday evening. However, I want to be clear that this situation is not unique in terms of the crimes and or the commitment shown by our officers who consistently put themselves in harm's way in their unwavering commitment to public safety. The individuals committing these crimes are violent and are not deterred by the thoughts of being arrested. Several charges, including failure to comply, release orders, and breach of probation, attest to their blatant disregard for the law. This particular incident involved two carjacking, resulting in three arrests and three seizures of firearms. A total of 54 charges have been laid thus far. Additional are pending. One victim suffered serious injuries during their carjacking, and miraculously, none of our officers were harmed during the arrests, as you will witness in the following video we're about to show you. I want to thank officers from 31 Division and the Hold Up Squad for their outstanding work and their dedication to this critical issue. I now call up Inspector Mattis of the Hold Up Squad. Good afternoon. Today I'm going to provide you with information about several carjacking incidents that have occurred across our city over the past week. These incidents led to remarkable arrests by officers from 31 Division on Friday. Acting, as Acting Superintendent Gomes said, these incidents are just a snapshot of the larger issue that tr the Toronto Police Service and our law enforcement partners confront daily in the greater Toronto area. On Saturday, April 6, 2024, a resident was robbed of his blue BMW X5 in the Ellesmere and Kennedy Road area in Toronto. As the victim exited his vehicle, a white SUV pulled up behind him. Three masked male suspects, all dressed in black, armed with a firearm, demanded his keys. They took his vehicle and thankfully nobody was physically injured. On Thursday, April 11th, 2024, another resident was filling up his Lamborghini Urus at a gas station in the Young and Shepherd Avenue area in the city when a gray sedan approached. Four male suspects exited the sedan, assaulted the victim, and eventually took his keys. The victim was repeatedly assaulted and run over by his own victim as the suspects fled. He suffered serious injuries and was taken to hospital. The trauma inflicted on victims of this violence cannot be overstated. Being threatened with a gun can have long-term impacts on one's sense of safety, well-being, and let alone experiencing physical violence and serious physical threats. This is why it's imperative that we continue working closely with our law enforcement partners to address these crimes and bring those responsible to justice. I'll now invite Superintendent Andy Singh to provide further details on these arrests. Thank you, Inspector Mattis. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I want to take you to the past Friday, the just uh, uh, weekend, uh, April 12th. Officers from 31 Division were in the area of Islington Avenue and Steeles uh, using their automatic license plate reader technology. Uh, they picked up on a Lamborghini that passed them, and, uh, and it came up that this Lamborghini was, in fact, stolen. This, this vehicle w was then followed to a street called Barmack Drive, and where they saw the driver of the stolen Lamborghini enter an establishment. While conducting surveillance in the area of the Lamborghini, they also noticed a BMW X5 arriving and parking nearby. And these individuals, three of them also went into the establishment. Officers quickly confirmed, using the technology they had, that this was the same BMW that Inspector Joe Mattis just mentioned had been carjacked on April 6th. When the driver and the occupants of the vehicle, BMW X5, uh, exited the establishment, the, the following sequence of events ensued. 
these individuals tried to get in the stolen vehicle and officers moved in to make an arrest. To evade police, the driver recklessly reversed up a hill and smashed into police vehicles. There's a video that's going to be shown here and I want to highlight uh, what, what you're going to see on this video. What you're going to see is the exceptional danger that the officers faced when they tried to make an make arrest and move in to arrest these individuals. As we uh, try to execute the video here, what you'll notice is that the, the suspect vehicle was, was actually boxed in by many police vehicles. But the high rate of speed that this suspect vehicle backed up the hill and hit one of the police vehicles was nothing short of absolute disregard for any lives, specifically the men and women who were there to execute the arrest. Police were forced to smash the windows of the vehicle because what you'll see on video and you may not be able to appreciate is the driver was revving the vehicle to actually break out of the box. So they had to use many techniques to enter and access the occupants of the vehicle. And their non-compliance further led to them having to utilize a taser on some of the occupants who were not complying with officer's commands. A news release has been issued with the names of the accused and all the charges, but I can tell you that upon apprehension, so the suspects were found to be in possession of more than $18,000 in Canadian currency and cash, three handguns. All three handguns had high capacity magazines. They had ammunition in them, and there was a secondary magazine that each firearm possessed. What was of equal and greater concern was that one of the Glock handguns, which had a high capacity magazine, also had an automatic switch. And what that means is with the depression of the trigger, you, you, with one trigger squeeze, the handgun is able to empty the entire content of the ammunition, making it an automatic weapon. And you can imagine how much risk that poses to police officers and the general public. And as uh, Superintendent Gomes mentioned, these criminals are violent. They pose a very grave threat to both our residents and our officers. I'm really proud of the exceptional work done by my officers at 31 Division, the bravery, the professionalism that they executed in some very dynamic, very difficult circumstances in arresting these individuals and, and uh, bringing them to justice as we move to the courts. Uh, these arrests also serve as a reminder that we take these crimes very seriously and remain steadfast in our commitment to ensure safety and well-being of our residents above all else. Thank you. I'll take any questions if there are any. Absolutely. Inspector Mattis. Sure. Um, can you just clarify that question in regards to, do you want to 2024 stats or? Any stats you can compare with the first quarter of 2024 and maybe first quarter of 2023 or just what we're on pace for this year? Is there been an improvement or be the same? Okay. Uh, so year to date carjackings uh, in 2023, and this was as of April 8th. In 2023, we had 23 carjackings. And year-to-date 2024, we've had 45. Um, there were three people here that have been charged in the, on Thursday 11th in the carjacking. It says that four male suspects exited. Is there still one person in those standing? Yes, the investigation is ongoing, and as soon as an arrest is made, we will notify you through our corporate communications. And then there's a 21-year-old, a 19-year-old, and, and a male youth. Uh, these are young individuals, and when we see the pictures over here, firearms, one with an automatic switch. What is the assessment right now in terms of are these three young individuals who are just acting and want to do this on their own? Do you, are there, is there a belief that they're part of a, a crime ring? It's a combination of both. We do see that uh, adults often exploit youths uh, due to sentencing differentials, um, but then there's also youth who believe that this is easy money and they're in it for themselves. Superintendent, you were talking about the fact, I mean, obviously you can see the weapons used, high-powered weapons. Did any of these suspects draw these firearms at your office? Uh, luckily, they did not. Uh, however, uh, they were uh, very readily accessible 
and, and I can't speak to the individual observations of the officers uh, because this, like you have indicated, could have gone uh, very bad for everyone involved. But from what I, what I garner is uh, luckily we were able to arrest them in a contained fashion. And just to circle back to the earlier question about the, the youth and, uh, and the two individuals, one of them was actually arrested for a carjacking in December. And that's the driver of the, of the X5. And that just highlights the, the challenges around this individual, very recently arrested, right back out and, and executing another uh, carjacking. And then, and then their actions, as you can see clearly, uh, totally brazen, uh, total disregard for the direction they're getting from police officers. They can see there's police presence in the area and there's an active a mindset to, to do whatever they can to get away, and, and of course, they're armed. We've been covering these uh, for so many months now, really. There was the uh, investigation in Montreal by the OPP, and then obviously we've talked about it in the field quite a lot. Can you talk about what supports or what changes need to happen in order to make sure that, yes, these are successful investigations, that's good, but that the problem isn't escalating uh, as it is right now? Did you want to say that? Um, so just to summarize, you're wondering what steps are, are be, going to be taken moving forward to combat this issue? No, I think what I'm asking is what do you guys think is needed to be done to help you? You mentioned a little bit about how they were out on bail at various degrees, Correct. things like that. I mean, I'm just wondering if there are changes that you guys think could be made right now that would help to clamp down on this problem. We have the auto summit. There's been so much yep. conversation about, about what needs to be done here. I'm curious what you think. Okay. This isn't just an enforcement issue, and I stood up on this podium last week discussing the success of the robbery prevention program where we partnered with regulatory agencies, the College of Pharmacists, and the Toronto Police. We need to work with all our partners in order to combat auto theft and carjackings, and that's working with all levels of our government, which we are doing, as you mentioned in the uh, Peel Auto Theft Summit, working with CBSA, uh, our public sector, our auto manufacturers, um, the insurance sector, police of course have their role, but it's about us engaging all of those people and moving forward in one direction, much as we did with the pharmacy robberies. So from maybe from a divisional perspective, you can give us kind of an understanding as to how things work, because obviously there's priority calls, different priority calls. You're not always able to respond when there's a carjacking in action or a car theft, because there isn't violence associated to a car theft specifically. So what happens, I guess, once someone is the victim of a violent crime like this and they call police. I mean, is this something that you try to investigate in the moment and find the suspects immediately or does it now become kind of a broader investigation where you rely on things like the technology, in this case, to find the vehicles and bring these perpetrators to justice? You know, it's, it's all of the above. Uh, to, to highlight, the initial response always surrounds us getting there as quickly as we can for the person that's been victimized. And then starts the crime scene and, and and ascertaining evidence from video, from all different uh, avenues, such as witnesses. And then we have excellent partnerships, obviously, within the organization with the holdup squad, you know, the different task forces that we have. And then externally uh, as well with, uh, you know, whether it's the insurance bureau and, and, and determining whether it's Montreal, the port city and all that. And like Inspector Mattis alluded to, it's, it's truly, truly a, it has to be a, a global approach here. And, and that's what we aim to do is, even in, in a case like this, now we're looking at these individuals have they done other, other carjackings beyond what we already know, and then tying up those pieces of evidence. So bringing that collective, because I think earlier the question was asked is, are they a part of a crime ring? And, and I would argue a lot, of these, a lot of these individuals have ties, and they do work as a group. And, and those are the systems that we're trying to dismantle and, and break from an enforcement standpoint, but there's many levels to this, and that's our hope is through partnerships that we can continue to create a bigger footprint in reducing carjackings and auto thefts. All right, that is the latest from Toronto Police this afternoon, updating the media on recent carjacking investigations in our city, talking about two specific carjackings, calling them totally brazen. The first one happened near Ellesmere and Kennedy on April 6th. A man driving a BMW was approached by three suspects. The suspects demanded the car keys, and one of the suspects pointed a firearm at the vehicle. And the second incident happened in the Young and Shepherd area a few days later. The driver of a Lamborghini was repeated 
repeatedly assaulted by four suspects who eventually took the victim's keys and fled in the stolen luxury car. The driver of the Lamborghini suffered serious injuries. Officers later followed that stolen Lambo uh, to a parking lot, and that is also where they found the stolen BMW in the same lot. At one point, that BMW was boxed in by police vehicles. Uh, TPS releasing some dramatic footage of those arrests. We can now tell you three arrests were made, three seizures of firearms, and a total of 54 charges laid as well.